Hi, this is Mike. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the um, authorization setup when you're using Azure Service Bus. If we have a look in the portal here, you can see we've um, we've got the shared access policies now, and most people are going to be moving away from Access Control Service to be using SAS for in, uh, for authenticating against Service Bus. So in this particular project, I'm really focusing on that SAS area. And the idea is how do we configure our queues to be nice and secure and and kind of manage that um, that setup. So if we look in the portal, you can see here we can do some basic stuff like add a new add a new um, policy here. And the problem with the, the new policy at the portal level is I can pick some permissions here and then I can choose to save them, but that effectively applies them at the top level and gives those permissions across everything in the namespace. And when you work in a real-world project, that's probably a lot more access than you would want to grant. Now, the challenge here is if, if I want to add um, my new policy, but I kind of want to say, well, at root level, I don't want to have any permissions. If I go to save that, you can see it, it won't let me save that policy now. And what you need to do is actually go and apply those um apply those permissions at queue level so we've got a little bit of a challenge there about how we do that because the portal gives us limited ability to do that so if we take an example of um, we go and look at a queue here and you know we, we can do a little bit of stuff in the portal so we can set some permissions here and straight away you can see that's going to become quite um, quite cumbersome to have to go to every single queue in the portal and apply those and then the, the challenge as well. What about when I move from one environment to the next? You know, how do I how do I cascade those across? So the the question here is um, with this, this tool is how can we kind of give us a bit of a better way of dealing with this? So before we jump into what I've been doing, let's take a quick look at um, Service Bus Explorer because again, you know, in addition to doing some basic setup in in here. You know, we've got our queues, we can do some stuff with topics as well. You know, so again, we can configure our SAS policies through the portal, but again, it's going to be really painful to have to dig down and do it for everything. So the, at the Service Bus Explorer level, we can click a queue, here's the same namespace, and we can go and look at our authorization rules, and you can see we can choose the different types of... Um, types of rule we can apply our um, SAS key here and you know we, we can do a whole bunch of stuff um, you know we, we can do some stuff and with um, Service Bus Explorer we get the option to export to XML and then we can you know we can um, import that back in so we've got a little bit of capability to be able to um, move stuff across environments by manually exporting the config and then re-importing it somewhere else but again the challenge here is that well actually um, when I redo my config you know sometimes I, I might not want to like redo every single every single object uh, entity within the service bus namespace and what I what I kind of found would be a, a way I'd quite like to do this in, in you know, in the real world with, with proper projects is actually define my queue and topic setup in one place and then kind of apply the security on top of that after I've deployed the queues and that means I can you know go go around changing the security without have to, uh, having to actually um, worry about setting up new queues or removing queues or, or redoing them. So let's take a quick look at what um, what I did. So we've got a tool here and the the idea is that we've got this um, this library, so if, you know you can use this direct from .NET, or you can um, you know you can write some PowerShell to use it or something like that. And within here we've got two helper classes, so we've got the SAS policy helper and the SAS report generator. And the policy helper is really intended to you know kind of um, take a definition of what your your queue, uh, queue and topic security should be, or your service bus namespace security should be, and then apply that. And the SAS report generator is really about can can we have a report that gives us a nice clean way to look at um, to look at what what our queue setup is. 
So if we have a look, um, as well as the library, it comes with a console app that sits on top of it. And in the console app, I've got some command files here. So let's take a look at um, the first one, which is remove SAS rules. So the idea here is that I can run this command file and it'll it'll basically execute the console application with the command of remove SAS permissions. And I just give it a connection string for service bus. And that's going to go to the namespace and just remove all of the SAS permissions that might already exist. The next one is import SAS rules. So again, I'm going to supply the command here to, the, to my console app. I'm going to use the command import SAS rules. And as well as the connection string, which I've got over here, this time I'm going to give it an input file, which is, you know, in this case, I've just called it my setup XML. And if we take a look here in this file, basically what I've done is I've defined some policies at the top. So I've got my policies, my keys, primary and secondary key. And then I've gone down each entity. So I've got each queue and each topic and also each relay. And for these I've said, right, for each policy, what permissions does it get? So manage, send and listen and I can configure some quite complex um, combinations here. And also, so the, the permissions will be applied at queue level or topic level. And then finally we've got the relay where I've also added a bit based off um, an article Sam, um, Sam Van Out wrote recently about how to configure the security for relays. So I've, so I've added this to the stuff I did a while back. And what we can do here is we'll, if the relay doesn't already exist, we can choose to create it and we can specify the type and the requires authorization and transport security but <coughs> excuse me if it already exists we'll just skip over that and apply these policies so we can specify send listen manage etc and the idea here is that you'd you'd deploy your queue setup and then after you've done that we can just apply this on top of it which will set all the security we need and what we could also do is choose to have you know if we wanted to add a you know maybe a, a new permission for just one person we could get rid of everything out the file bar maybe maybe the definition of one new queue where we're going to change the change the rules or something like that and we could just um, grab a policy and, and update it so let's take a quick look at this in action now. So if you remember, we had our queues here where we've got no authorization rules currently and our topics as well. And what we can do now is when I um, when I compile that, so I can go and import my SAS rules and that just runs my, runs my config file here. And you can see it's updated all, all those definitions. And then if we go back to Service Bus Explorer and just refresh this, and you can see if we go to my queues now, I've already got set up the the various rules here. So you can see that those have been set as we specified in that XML file, and that's pretty handy. Now, one of the challenges here with this is that. We, you know, even if I look at the portal or through um, the service, but as an administrator, it's quite difficult for me to get a view of what my, um, you know, what my setup of security is in Service Bus. So I've got, you know, I have to look at every individual object, and you know, one of one of the things I've personally wondered is I haven't tested this yet, but could I specify the same key on two different queues, but use it, you know, the use say this um, message and rule the key name if I use that on Q2 and Q1 could I have a different key each time which to me doesn't really seem to make sense because I'd probably want to tell them to have a different um, a different key name so that it was it was easy to work out which one was which if someone said oh I can't access an object but even with that just having this this sort of holistic view across all of your service bus entities is, is the next challenge so what I've done for that is um, in addition so I'm just going to delete this HTML report which is the output and in addition to the import and remove SAS rules we've also got this create report command and if we have a look in Visual Studio we can see um, 
we call the command uh, the console app and we supply, uh, supply the command produce authorization report and then we specify the output file name and the connection string and when we run that we can see it's you know it's kind of doing its thing here and once it's done we'll get this um, HTML report at the bottom and if I pull that in you can see we go through here so we get a list of stuff we've, firstly we've got the SAS policies so this will tell us um, the policies that I've defined at Q and topic level now note one thing I haven't put in here is this um, the, the stuff you see in the portal where if we go um, if we go to the top level and we see these these permissions here so I haven't included those because I think what what should happen in the real world if you were using this approach would be you'd really only define your one or two um, administrator level permissions up here so you you know your root managed shared you'd be using that for for tooling and for um, a user to like use a um, service bus explorer or something and you'd actually sort of um, you wouldn't really use that for any of your messaging and we know in the in practice a lot of people tend to use that because it's easy and I think that that's just because there's not something like the tool that I'm setting up here to like help you automate and, and make it easy to, to do a proper secure service bus so from now on the idea would be you wouldn't really use that in your applications you'd only use it for tooling and administration so I haven't included that in the report yet but um, but if we look here here's the individual policies that we've we've set up through um, through our queue and topic configuration the next is here's the list of queues and here's what permission each you know each, each um, SAS policy has so you can see for Q1 message and rule 2 has the send permission and I've included the ID here next to the um, next to the rule just to be a hundred percent explicit around which one it is and if we look on the topics you can see we've got some people have got the listen and no one's got the send permission and finally we've got the relays um, where we've got the, the different users with their send and receive permissions and finally what I think is probably the most useful is the SAS policy view so sometimes you might get the question here who has what permission on my Q1 and you can answer that quite easily but you might also say well if we had the SAS policy called message and rule if we were to change that policy what would be impacted now if you went into um, service bus explorer that's going to be quite difficult to work out so you're going to have to look at every queue pull it all together and the same in the portal you're going to find it difficult to ascertain which entities are used by by a certain policy in the report however I can go and go in here and see well you know the send permission is on that queue and it can listen on those queues and those relays so it gives you like a sort of a, a twisted view of the of the authorization data where it's focused around the user rather than the object so I'm hoping this um, this report sort of begins to give you some really useful information from a management perspective and I think um, so generally the idea here is to just make this code available for people to just download and try it out and get some feedback and see if there's any other tools that we that we want to add to it or any other commands and um, hopefully that'll you know it'll be like the the automation of deploying the queues I did last year where you'll be able to use this tool to do a similar thing to apply your security <laughs>